In this series, we're going to cover the CSS grid, which has become very, very popular in the last year. Now, I want to point out early on, this is not a beginner's series. So if you do not know what an HTML tag is, if you don't know what a CSS property is, if you don't know how to create a style sheet, you should go take my HTML and CSS for beginners series. And I will put the links to those playlists in the description of this video. That being said, we are going to dive right into this subject. Now, as always, I want you to create a website folder and I want you to create an index.html and a style sheet. And as always, I will put the code that I create in this video in the description of this video. I will create a paste link to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's actually go ahead and edit our index.html in Notepad++. And then let's go ahead and grab our style sheet as well. And there you can see we've got a blank style sheet and we've got a blank HTML document. So we are going to go ahead and build this from scratch. That's actually the best way to learn the CSS grid is literally to start from scratch. So that's what we're doing. So the first thing you need to do is create a div inside your body section. And this div is actually going to hold our CSS grid container. So we need to create a class for that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll give this a class name of container hyphen grid. So this is going to be our main class where we define all of the main attributes to our grid. So everything that we put inside of this container now, everything that we stick inside of this div will work against whatever we define in our main container class. So this is actually the most important part when you're getting started with your CSS grid. You want to get this right, sort of the overall layout correct before you start adding sections. So that's what we're going to do. Actually, in this video, we're going to set up our container grid. So now that we have our class defined, let's flip over to our style sheet. Now, normally I don't do this, but I'm going to actually show you the basic grid that we're going to create over the next several videos, the finished product. And again, normally I don't do that, but it's sort of necessary because I want to explain why we're adding particular properties and why we're assigning particular values to them. So again, in this series, we're first going to start out with a very basic layout so you understand the concepts of the CSS grid. Then we will move on to more complex layouts. So as I said, I'm actually going to show you the end result that we're going to be designing over the next several videos. So let's go ahead and actually minimize this, but we want to keep some of this up so that we can code away. And then here is the layout that we're going to create. And you'll notice this is a very standard basic grid. We have three columns. Column one is right here. Column two is right here. Column three is right here. And we have three rows. So row one's right here, row two is right here, and row three is right here. And as you can see, we have nine different sections that each have different colors associated with them. So this is going to be a very basic grid that we're gonna begin with. And let's just go ahead back to our index.html and grab this right here. As you know, if you followed my other lectures, I love to copy and paste. So let's go ahead and create a period. And that, of course, signifies a class in CSS. So let's go ahead and copy and paste our class name right here. And there we go. And actually, let's resize this and make this a little bit bigger. I think we're going to need a little bit more room here. And let's just resize this. And maybe give this a little bit more room. There we go. And actually just a little bit more room. Sorry about this. I want to make sure we have enough room when we're typing. Okay, good. So the first thing we need to do, absolute first thing we need to do is use the display property. So we type in display. And here is the new addition, grid. That is the new addition to CSS. So this kicks everything off. This is the absolute first thing we need to define when we create our style sheet for our CSS grid. This will actually create our grid. And then all of the rest of the properties that we use will work against this value right here. So this kicks it all off. This tells CSS we are going to be using the CSS grid. Very important. Okay, so let's go ahead and use another property. And this is going to be a new property that's associated with the CSS grid. So we're going to go ahead and define our columns. That's actually the second step. So let's go ahead and type in grid. And it's actually going to be right here if you have this IntelliSense 2 grid hyphen template hyphen columns. So this will create our columns. Now, what is going on here? Well, as I said, our basic layout is gonna have three columns. One column, our second column, and our third column. So we need to create three columns. Now, I wanna point out early on, there are many different ways to create columns using the CSS grid. This is one way we're gonna do it, but in future videos, we're actually gonna examine some of the different ways you can create columns. But we wanna just create a very basic layout to begin with. And you know what? I wanna resize this one more time. I think we're gonna need a little bit more space here to type. 
Okay, sorry about that. So what we're gonna do again is add our three columns. So first I want you to do is type in auto, and then auto again, and then auto again, and then let's close out the property. Okay, here's how this works. Each one of these is a placeholder for the particular column that we wanna add. So this auto right here, this first placeholder, will define this first column. This relates to this first column. This second auto here relates to this second column. That will create our second column. And this third one creates the third column. Now, if we wanted a fourth column, you could put another auto here. So that's how that works. Now, why are we using auto here? Why don't I just put in uh, you know, a particular pixel count? Well, you can do that, but the auto is a nice way to start out with CSS grids because this will auto size perfectly to the size of the browser window. And you can see that here. Look, these are size perfectly. And that's what this auto does. It basically will take all three of these and redistribute the space evenly amongst all three columns. And you can see how that's working here. Take a look at that. It's perfect. Perfectly centered, perfectly aligned. And that is the great thing about the CSS grid. This is why people are falling in love with this because look how simple that was. These are all properly aligned. We didn't have to put any margins in here. We didn't have to put any padding. It just aligned it perfectly for us. So that is why we want to start out with auto. CSS will take this and automatically size all three of these and redistribute the sizing perfectly between them. And as you can see, no one section is bigger than the other section, and that's what we want for our beginning basic grid. Now, there are other ways we can resize these, and we'll talk about that in future lectures, but for now, we're not gonna do that. Okay, so now that we have our columns defined, we need to define our gutters right here. These are the gutters. And you notice we have gutters separating the columns as well as the rows. So that's what we're gonna define right here. And actually they are referred to in the CSS grid as gaps, but I still need to call them gutters. That's sort of the old style lingo. So the property that we use is grid gap. That's the property that we want to use. Another new property that's associated with the CSS grid. And let's go ahead and give this 10 pixels. That's what we're gonna give this. Now, what this will do is create 10 pixels for all of our gutters that surround our different sections. Now, there are ways to actually tailor base this. You can actually work against the column gutters if you want, or the row gutters, but we're not gonna do that in this video. And actually, I don't even like to do that. I actually just like this broad-based grid gap property. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. So now we've got our gutters defined. Now we need to actually create our rows. And for this basic template that we start out with, we're only gonna go ahead and create three rows. That's it. That's all we're gonna create in the first basic grid that we designed. So here's the first row, here's the second row, here's the third row. So we go ahead and we call another property and it is called grid template rows. That is exactly what we need. And this works kind of similar to our columns. We're gonna go ahead and actually create the placeholders. Now you could use auto here, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna actually go ahead and give this a specific pixel count. And we're gonna say 100 pixels for the first one and for the second one as well and you guessed it, for the third one. So this will define our rows, and then we go ahead and close this out. Now, I wanna point out one thing. This 100 pixels is for the height of the row, not the width. The width, we didn't specify here because that is automatically set by our column size. And remember, our column size sizes appropriately to the size of the browser window, however large it is. And that is very, very nice. Take a look at this. Let's actually go ahead and expand this out. See how these got larger now? It sized this perfectly. And that's really the nice thing about the CSS grid. So very, very nice indeed. So once again, these relate to the height of our row. Okay, now that we have the container set, we're ready to go ahead and add our very first section. And we're gonna do that in the next video. See you guys then.